Hi, this is Ron Levy, and I'm beyond thrilled to host the Edge of AI podcast, the next great endeavor from the Edge of company. If you like the Edge of NFT, you'll love the Edge of AI. Stay tuned to hear more about what's to come. Hi, NFT Curious listeners. Stay tuned for today's episode to learn more about the Edge of AI podcast, its captain, and some of the incredible early guests. Let's hear about the Web3 and AI convergence that's already begun and where it might be going next. Finally, hear how one man's prized motorbike and a tank of gas serve as a fix for just about any problem. And yes, it's official. You can now dive into the captivating world of artificial intelligence with the Edge of AI podcast. Join us as we explore the frontiers of AI and its impact on our lives. Subscribe now on your favorite podcast platform and follow us on Twitter at Edge of underscore AI and LinkedIn for exciting updates and insights. You can also visit our new website at edgeofai.xyz. Welcome to the Edge of NFT, the podcast that brings you the top 1% of Web3 today and what will stand the test of time. We explore the nuts and bolts of the business side and also the human element of how Web3 is changing the way we interact with the things we love. This podcast is for the dreamers, disruptors, and doers who are pumped about this ecosystem and driving where it goes next. Today's guest is none other than the esteemed host of our newest broadcast, the Edge of AI podcast, and his name is Ron Levy. Give a little bit about Ron before we welcome him to the show. As co-founder and CEO of The Crypto Company Incorporated, Ron has led one of the first publicly traded entities within the blockchain industry. His company extends services spanning technology, consultation, and training. A significant branch of this venture is the Blockchain Training Alliance, trusted by government agencies and leading global companies for quality blockchain education. In addition to this, Ron is a co-founder of Redwood Fund LP, which specializes in investing in small cap companies. He also boasts a successful stint as the founder and CEO of a renowned custom home building company in Los Angeles, California. One of his current roles includes serving as a co-founder and director of the Crypto Roundtable, a membership community aimed at fostering understanding and awareness of Web3 digital assets and blockchain applications. Beyond his entrepreneurial ventures, Ron is a speaker and inspirational leader, serving his companies and communities with unwavering character and commitment. Ron, welcome to Edge of NFT and Edge of AI. Thanks so much, Ethan. I really appreciate appreciate that great intro. It was kind of like going back in the past for me, and it made me tired just hearing it, but I can't tell you how thrilled I've been here, obviously, watching what Edge of AI has done from day one. Well, uh, we we appreciate you, Ron, and I think that intro sort of, you know, hits home for me in terms of why we wanted you to to be our captain on the Edge of AI Voyage, because you have such a unique and diverse entrepreneurial experience that's crossed all sorts of different industries, and, and that's what Edge of AI is all about. It's this, you know, cross-cutting conversation because AI sort of is oozing into the pores of every aspect of society. So um, let's sort of uh, start by diving into some of that background I just mentioned and learn a little bit more about how you got into the tech space. Uh, what What's that journey been like for you and in, in sort of where, where what are some of the early beginnings there? Well, I can tell you probably the first early beginning goes back to the zeros when I was running my uh, my uh, construction and real estate development company. And in my sector, I was one of the largest in LA, which I was very proud of. But a gentleman showed up on my job sites wanting to develop a project management software. And I'll spare you the long story, but he wanted to use my company as a guinea pig to do it. And I always like to be a little advanced in tech. So I said, yes. And it was one guy driving around with some laptops and working with my guys to develop his own product and fast forward 15 to 20 years and he's got a $4 billion company. So having watched that happen, I thought, well, that's kind of interesting. I took note of that. And then, you know, ultimately through other things, I ended up um, starting the crypto company and getting to know crypto and blockchain. And it was like a magnet for me for a lot of reasons. I just love the, I guess I'll call it decentralization philosophy and really, really fell into it. And uh, and I'm I'm by nature a curious person, so 
I went deep and I loved it. And then being around all the other people that, that are uh, attracted to that and projects and building things. And it, it's just been like a seamless natural fit. Yeah, no, that, that totally hits home for, for me, of course. Um, one sort of special factoid for our audience here is Ethan and I actually met through the round table that you moderate. Right. And, um, you know, it, it was a, it was totally this consortium of polymaths talking about where the world is going. So, you know, it's not surprising that AI is now a conversation that we want to be part of because we're all attracted to that energy around conversations about what's disrupting society and, and how is it going to um, all sort of make things happen. And I think another part of, of your personality and in, in sort of your your sort of hobbies that we should talk about is is your your, your world travel sort of energy, right? Like I, I have that travel bug. I know Richard does. We've talked about it uh, before and Ethan certainly does as well. Um, how has that kind of fit into shaping your perspective on these types of things? I think probably the main part about it, it has had a big impact in my life. And um, a lot of those wilder travels were certainly a lot of years ago. However, some of the lessons stuck with me. Um, you know, when you're by yourself in the middle of the jungle and you got bad things and bad people after you, you know, you learn something. And, and you know, I was around tribal culture, right? You learn something there. And I lived in fully communist countries for years that were um, you know, very heavy handed communism and, and I can keep going and going different religions, by the way. And I think when you see the results of all these things, you get a different perspective. And that's why coming back here to the United States and working here is yet one more perspective, which, which obviously we're immersed in, but I didn't end up taking any of it for granted. It was something to measure it against. And when web three showed up for me, it was just a natural. It, it kind of, I could, I could look at how this decent, decentralization of Web3 could help every type of society I was part of in theory. And I thought, well, that's a very unique quality. So it's been amazing. And, um, you know, and AI, I mean, it's, it's whatever, whatever excitement we had in blockchain, you can, you know, put a, put multiples of that on top of AI with what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. What, what I was going to say to that, man, is that through traveling the world, you start to meet and get a lot of experiences that really cross over into the world of entrepreneurship. And you put out different, you put out energy, try to meet different people and serendipity starts to happen. And on your voyage and finding serendipity, you serendipitously found us in our cross paths. And there's been a lot of really cool things that are happening now as we kind of dive into the world of AI, just like you're alluding to. So can you kind of just talk through the story of like how it was that you were able to cross paths with us and, and now are becoming a host of, of our new show? Richard, it's such a, a, an amazing point you made. You know, there was an art form. When I used to land in a new city, it, it would you would be nervous and have adrenaline pumping at the same time. Like, how, I don't know anybody here. How am I going to get started? And you develop art forms and you realize every place you go is defined by the people you meet. And I'll give you one example. There was one town I went into and I got into a cab the very first day I was there. And, you know, the cabbie talked me into going somewhere. And I went there and it was like, this is not how I want to start my journey. It was, it was what I didn't want. And I remember sitting in my hotel room that night and I'm going, how do I, how do I change that? And in my mind, I came up with the idea, you know, I'm going to go downtown tomorrow and I'm going to go where people would go for happy hour after that I'm working, because those people seem to me to be what might give me the experience I wanted. And it worked. It worked tremendously. But it's just a matter of stepping back. And it's, none of that is genius, but it's a matter of not taking things for granted. And you just step back and do that. And like Josh was saying, you know, the roundtable, the crypto roundtable, I'm very proud of. I started it and I'm not going to get into naming names, et cetera, but great projects have come out of it and great people. And most of those people just showed up out of intrigue and curiosity, yet with the lessons that they've learned and more than anything, I'd like to think I can deliver this, is anybody can move forward. doesn't matter where who you are or where you are. If you choose to, you can do it. Just make one relationship, just take one move. And a lot of people did that. And I do remember the day that Josh called me up and he happens to be local in LA and I had never met him face to face before that. And uh, and he said, you want to meet me at Third Street? And we did. And I remember that conversation. It was about the future. It was about 
as they say, skating to where the puck's going to be. And we talked about that. And, you know, so to see edge of companies as a result of that, and I give myself about 1% credit for some inspiration. And, you know, now the, the, the founders have done ridiculous amounts of work to build it into what it is, but it's amazing. And, and so I think AI does that as well, because as you'll see in the edge of AI podcasts of which we film some of them, the subjects are completely varied. It's not a tech show, even though it's a tech show. It's a holy heck, look what's going on. And I would suggest that anybody, whether it's just curiosity about it, whether they're looking for a career change, whether they're looking for a place to invest money, it doesn't matter. It's all there. And I don't know where else to go to get that kind of information. And um, I, I think it's going to be amazing. And I can't tell you how thankful I am to, to have become the host of it and uh, be able to part of the part of the the launch. Yeah. And, you know, for, for the listeners out there who are, are curious about the new podcast, you know, uh, a few inklings there show up where show up where Ron's hosting things. Uh, you know, you might come out of it with a, whether you like it or not, a new business venture or, you know, some kind of a, a cool insight or a new career or something like that. So um, no promises, but uh, but Ron has a little bit of a lucky charm status in, in, in that respect. Um, which I don't even know if we thought of before we 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 brought him on board um, as the host. There's just so many other great reasons. But um, I would love to chat a little bit about the show uh, with you for a minute, Ron. You and I have been behind the scenes doing some recordings. Um, I'm acting a little bit more as a producer of this one, although I have recorded a couple episodes as host. Um, Oh, by the way, before we forget, you know, we've been talking about the Edge of AI podcast. We should just mention before people get too impatient, uh, where you can subscribe and where you can learn more about it. Uh, edgeofai.xyz is the website. And if you go forward slash subscribe, then you can easily subscribe on all major platforms. We're also going uh, live to TV very quickly um, as well. So you can check us out on Defiance uh, Network. Um, also on Twitter, we're just edge of underscore AI. And then on LinkedIn, the company name is just edge of AI, no spaces. Um, and you can keep up with everything going on. But back to the regularly scheduled programming here. Uh, by the time this episode airs, Ron, uh, we will have launched August 2nd. And, and as I said, you're front and center for the recordings of the early episodes. I want to chat a bit about what you've done so far. Any general comments before we dive into some of the specific episodes? Um, yeah, general comment is, you know, sometimes I've gotten the name of a company and or a person that we're going to be doing the interview with. And, you know, right away, it's my thought is I'm not sure why we're doing this or this may not be that exciting. But inevitably, it's amazing. It's like, now I get it. And I think that really speaks to AI. AI is, is putting itself into everything we do, everything any company will do. Into, there's nothing that it's not going to touch. So you actually can go across any sector. And the great thing is it's entrepreneurs that are deciding which niche to tackle. And it's just blue sky. I mean, you can pick anything and it's out there. I mean, we'll get into some of what we've done, but everything from deep fakes on the true AI side all the way to clothes, believe it or not. Like it's just right. truly amazing. So I think you're going to find it. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you, I'm going to rewatch them because there's so much information. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And you mentioned the entrepreneurial side and, and uh, interestingly, you know, we've got several facets, which you've also been involved in, but, you know, clearly you're attracted to the entrepreneurial side of things. We've got experts who are building the tech behind the scenes of how AI works. How does machine learning work? How has it worked for decades and how has it been built? Um, we've also got artists and creators coming on as well as people who are using the tech in interesting ways, which we're calling use cases, right? So, hey, they, we caught this person doing something amazing using AI. It's not necessarily a business or, or something like that, but it's a cool project that they're doing. Let's check it out and actually have them show us how how it comes together. Um, and, and maybe and maybe since you uh, mentioned the entrepreneurial side of things up front, why, why don't we skip right over to one of those uh, use case examples of Galen Oaks of Future Factory. It was one of the earliest recordings you and I did. Um, and uh, and Galen was doing some really amazing things in, in mid-journey and we asked him to share how and, and he's 
very, very kindly did. And we'll have the videos up. But what was your impression of, of Galen? And, and what did you think of, of that episode? What did you take away from it? What I really loved is they're, they're using AI, um, you know, with Mid Journey and creating artwork with it. And that part is fantastic. And I love it. But what they're doing that I see is fairly unique, not 100% unique, is they're also uh, providing a physical space in multiple cities. So now you can join, you know, with some criteria. And that criteria, quite honestly, is just that you're you're interested in that and spending time in it and active. As long as you are, it's welcome. And there's one in LA and you literally get a membership and you will be show, showing up and be around like-minded people. And that to me is super powerful and amazing. And they're opening in other cities. By the time uh, this airs, they may be open in New York. I don't want to speak for them, but they are opening in other cities. They're getting great adoption. And so it's this combination of Web3 with the physical space, which which I think is an area that needs growing is that personal contact with people. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. I think you, you bring up something pretty, pretty interesting. And this is something Richard and I see as well uh, as we talk to folks that might be potential guests on the show and sort of um, we're straddling sort of the curation side of both um, edge of NFT and edge of AI is is there is this convergence and that convergence usually involves some sort of mix of digital and IRL and and that's really important to mind melt and and people want to get together they don't want to just create the art they want to show it off they want to talk about how they did it right and and so um we're really excited about sort of the live podcast format for that reasons I know we have one that will have um already uh, happened before this um the show comes out, but but if you've been checking out our newsletter, you know about you know our launch party on August second. But um, we love those guys at Future Factory because they're creating a home for you know disruption and innovation. Uh, they help with Outer Edge LA, and uh, one can imagine that that we can sort of accelerate the learning curve of of using AI for for good and for impact. Uh, if we not only use it for art, like Galen's doing, but if we provide a place where people can talk about how they're using it. Yeah, and it really, what you did just said speaks to the, the, the one of the commonalities we have between me and my companies and, and you guys in Edge Of, and that's education. I know Edge Of companies, they are a media company, make no mistake. But in my mind, they're an education company. The idea is to educate people with everything you do. And we've been doing that for years in this industry. And something like Future Factory just does even more of it. And and face-to-face -face get togethers are everything. If you do only the other side, something is truly missing. So to bring that in at this stage, the way they're doing it, uh, I think it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And just to recap too, you know, of the general flow of, of how that's all coming together. Of course, we're, we're all sort of insiders on it, but, you know, uh, we've been seeing things behind the scenes, but Future Factory is this amazing event space um, started by Paul uh, Hemming, um, as well as you know an incredible team that he's brought together to to to, to do things. And that team includes Galen Oaks, and Galen Oaks, the creative director of of the project. And you know they needed membership passes with with an NFT attached to them because they want to be at the cutting edge of things and they needed imagery for those 10,000 uh, profile pictures, right? And instead of doing the typical route of sort of mixing and matching using, um, you know, kind of using a randomization of, of different properties, uh, Galen actually found a way to create these very, very unique but intricate character faces, right? Um, that have dissimilarity they're unique uh there there's different sort of tribes of them but then also he was able to create like a cohesive feeling to all of these images even though there were 10,000 of them which if you've tried to use mib journey to create cool images you could do that but to create consistent images uh we were really impressed with with what he had done so so those images that galen were creating were for the nft passes to be a member of future factory and then future factory is this organization that um that Ron's been talking about. Anything else to add yeah. about that episode, or, or Richard? What did you were you going to say something? Yeah, I was just going to. Um, I, I mean, there's a lot of really cool things. I, I remember y'all talking about this, but kind of weaving into another episode that I know that y'all spent a lot of really cool time on uh, was uh, George Malika with uh, Duck Duck Goose uh, that talked about deep fakes and video images. Can we 
dive a little bit more into that one. I thought that was a really cool one. I'm happy. To, I'm happy to kick it off a little bit. It was, it was just truly amazing. First of all, Doris is out of the Netherlands, and um, you know it's so great. It shows how international this whole thing is, and you know you you don't even ask anymore. Typically, you're just talking to people and they're doing things. It doesn't even matter anymore. Um, but yeah, he's you know deep fakes is a really big deal. We all know that, and it's one of the scary things that's going on. And his technology gives you, for instance, if you're looking at someone's face you can run it through his technology and it'll give you a heat map on it. And it'll say, well, that nose isn't, is a fake, right? And with a percentage of surety, they'll say with 90% of surety, this is a deep fake. Or they can say with 90% of surety, this is the real deal, right? And they're creating libraries. It's absolutely amazing what they're doing to solve. This is the industry solving what the industry knows is a problem and is going to become a problem. They're designing the solutions off the bat. He's an amazing guy doing an amazing job. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 you know, some of the cool stuff that they're doing too, you know, Joris made a point to stress explainability um, as an important component of what we bring to AI, which, you know, Ron and I were like, explain explainability. <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah, but, uh, that's true. but it, you know, it, it's, it's, it's not that complicated once you understand what the term means, right? It's really like we have AI being able to do things for us, but we don't always have AI kind of telling us how or why it did what it did. And so, you know, what they're doing over there at, at Duck, Duck Goose is saying, we think this image is a deep fake. And then uh, here's, here's the type of deep fake that we think it is, right? Here's a couple of different types of deep fakes that we know people use, right? And for example, the example he gave in the podcast was like a face mash, basically. It was two unique individuals that they made look like one entirely new person. And uh, in fact, it was Joris and one of his co-founders, I believe. And they said, you looked at the face and you're like, oh, that's a real, that's a guy. Yeah, sure. That's a guy. I don't know him. I don't know where he lives or whatever, but yeah, that's a, that's a person. And, and their software says, you know, that's not a person. And here's why we don't think that's a person because we think it's a face mash. There were a couple other, they had something called like a lip sync or whatever. There's, there's different types of faking, faking that, that gets done. And you're able to say with percentage uh, likelihood that these different types were used. Ethan, it reminds me of the time that we tried to merge <laughs> together your face, my face, and Jeff's face to yes. create. Uh, don't do that. Let's not do that. <laughs> Someone wanted to create an NFT for us, and uh, we were trying to figure out, like, well, how do we create an NFT of a person when there's three of us? Um, yeah, that 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 was a little bit of an ugly mashup. Um, sort of like meatloaf, mashed potatoes, carrots, all, all, all together. But um, it, it did, it did make me wonder, guys, when you guys were having that convo, um, did the idea of using these deep fakes for like uh, authentication, sort of uh, hacking, come up? Um, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking about bank robberies and personal identity robbery, and how, you know, that's one concern I have with deep fakes. I'm curious if that came up in the convo at all. It, it it absolutely did. Um, they there was a lot of conversation around those types of protections and personal ID uh, specifically. Uh, personal ID was a, was a really big deal for Joris. Um, they're really focusing on that because it's real. I mean, look at we're all using passwords to get into our own bank accounts right now, right? Um, it's just going to be more and more and more, especially with metaverse, et cetera, et cetera. So. Having companies like this spending the time they are now and the energy they are now to come up with solutions for that is pretty amazing. And that's exactly what they're doing. Yeah, I think there, I just think there's more and more companies where you can use your face ID to um, to log in to an account. And on paper, that sounds, oh, that feels more secure, especially if they're making me move around and stuff. And then I'm just thinking about it. I'm like, and there's products like this out there, maybe not so much. Yeah, that's that, and that that is the goal. You know, I asked him about Iris. That's not happening yet, but but it will because you and I both know Iris scans are great when you're physically there. But if you do it over your computer and someone hacks in and gets that image, you kind of you know it's problematic, right? So they're solving for all of that, and there'll be different ways of uh, providing digital ID. And my guess is we will have many many guests 
that will be tackling different aspects of that. Actually, we we had one already that talked about audio. I don't know if you want to go there right now, uh, Richard or Ethan, but I found that fascinating. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll say uh, I think there was one more thing I wanted to mention about uh, about Duck Duck Goose and Juris was that they do video and and image. They gave an image as an example in in the episode, but they do do video. And as we're talking about security, you know, he, he talked about it, you know, coming out of a sort of like a university project, of course, and you know, trying to find exactly what their fit was going to be. And it's exactly what you you raised, Josh. Like identity is where this is needed the most, and that's where they've been targeting a lot of what they do. And down the line, you know, they may move into ever, other territories, but that's probably the the easiest locations. But but yeah. Ron, you were mentioning uh, Zohaib um, Ahmed of Resemble uh, AI, and and they uh, are doing audio now. Now there, you could call what they're doing deep faking, uh, but it's all on the on the up and up. They're they're sort of um, they're taking our voices and being able to create a double of them, right? It's it's quite amazing. They did one of me, and uh, uh, I can't tell the difference. I mean, it is me, but that, you know, the way they do it. And it's truly amazing. But what they've done back into Josh's question is they have a library. So I can speak into their library and it gets that check mark that this is wrong. Later on, if anybody tries to deep fake with my voice, it'll get measured against that. And if it's not me, the computer will say so. So the bigger the library gets, the more command they've got of that part of the industry. Um, they didn't say exactly how they did it tech wise. I didn't, didn't want to, you know, go into that detail on them, but I have a suspicion I know. Um, and it's brilliant. It's just absolutely brilliant. But they focus on it's resemble.ai. They focus on audio. That's what they do. That's their whole world, including. So we all use uh, speech to text and then text to speech, right? Most of us use it at some point of the day. Um, they're doing it through languages. So getting to a point where I could speak and you will hear your language. If you speak Italian, you're, I'm going to be talking full speed in English and you will hear it full speed in Italian. No delay, no having to wait. I almost think you'll hear it in my own voice speaking Italian. I might be wrong about that, but that that seemed to be what they might be working on. So Wow, that, that's pretty awesome. When I, when I think about sort of, um, you know, the impact uh, we as a company could make, I think you know, we, we've explored before, what would it be like if Edge of NFT or Edge of AI was translated into Chinese or Taiwanese or Vietnamese? And, and so the possibility that that's sort of on the horizon is really exciting. But I, but on another point, I will, I will mention because this weekend, uh, someone shared with me this fun Twitter space where Elon Musk was on, I don't know if anyone else saw this, where there's another guy that sounds exactly like Elon Musk that is frequently on Twitter spaces, and they were finally having their conversation with each other. And Elon is testing out whether or not this guy is really um, a person or AI, and, and he asks him, and this, the guy's like, well, ask me something that uh, you could only, uh, I could only answer if I wasn't AI. And he's like, that's impossible. AI can answer any question I ask. <laughs> so, so, so I think we need this type of technology, right guys? Because um, Richard, there could be like uh, your doppelganger out there getting into your accounts if, if we don't have uh, a company like this. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I was just going to add, like, the future of voice is, is, is really interesting. I've been looking more into this, and it goes back to a question that you asked, Josh, around, like, security, because one of the newest things that are happening is through voice, and Resemble is going to be really powerful for this because scammers are always going to scam. And the newest scam right now is taking somebody's granddaughter's voice, calling them on the phone saying, hey, I need help. I'm in this bad situation, send me money in the next hour, something bad's going to happen. And then unfortunately, people are getting scammed like that. And it's like, how do you, how would you even really be able to, you know, uh, figure that out in, in real time? Of course, you call somebody or, or whatever, but that's what the new age of scam is. And so like, I think that's going to keep elevating because as new tools are continuing to evolve and have a lot of good, unfortunately, it's going to be bad that comes with it. And I think we got to be ready for all these different scenarios. I didn't even put that together, Richard. You're exactly right. In this case, if that same granddaughter had put their voice into Resemble's database, then all grandma would have had to do is log in and say, is this her? 
and it would have said with 98% uh, surety it is not. Like that exists now, but we don't know it. And that's, I guess that's why it's called edge of companies. I mean, pulling all these things out that are more than relevant. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. And, and uh, I think Resemble called what they do uh, sort of a watermark of sorts, like an audio watermark. Um, and I think at least part of what, what they're able to achieve is if anything has been created using their software, then it can automatically be detected as artificially created through Resemble, right? So there's just another avenue that, that their tech uh, could be less likely to be used for uh, illicit purposes, right? In, in, a, in a way that, oh, okay, we know this is fake or this has been, this has been tampered with. Yeah. Um, you know, there's one more episode before we, you know, move on from talking episodes that might be worth uh, discussing. We just talked to Chris Schmidt from Parallel, which is a social e-com AI for fashion and sharing, you know, sizing and all these kind of cool stuff. Tell us a little bit about what you learned from that one, Rob. That was just amazing. And what I what I referred to uh, about clothes, this is it. So they've they've started this platform where you would with your with your iPhone with your camera you're going to take two pictures of yourself as close to naked as you're comfortable with right maybe some shorts on and you take a picture straight on a picture sideways you upload those photos and the AI takes over right and it takes your body measurements so there's been a company in the past probably more than one that you can then order clothes and they'll make the clothes that is not what this is what this does is it, it creates a library of all these people and they're up to 130,000 people that have put all their info in and then it groups you together. So I could have a group of a hundred or a thousand people that have my body type, right? And then when someone goes out and buys a shirt, right? Let's just say they bought a uh, Ted Baker shirt, right? They, they'll they say, oh, I bought a large, that's what fit me. Everybody that has the same body type will get that message or be able to look at it and click one button and get that shirt and that brand with that size. And what does it do? It goes from the beginning, which Chris, the problem Chris decided to solve was that a substantial portion of clothes are returned. And when they are returned, it's it's an outright loss for the, the manufacturer, maybe not 100%, but very much, you know, a substantial amount. So he wanted to solve that problem. And this is how he's doing it. Because now when you get what you get, you know it's going to fit. It, it's it's absolutely an amazing product. He He's an amazing guy, but he's got, you know, over a dozen developers. They all work under one roof. I think that's a very important part of the story. Um, and and they've done what they've done in two years. It's just this spectacular time frame to build this out, have adoption already. They're in over, I think, 100 companies, uh, countries, he said. It, it was mind-blowing but it was about the ai using it for the measurements i described but then using it to create communities for like-bodied people um it, it was just i mean i don't know I, even, I, even... I that that's that's what i'm i'm excited to to listen to because um you know this has been a, a pain point for for me um i i'm like a march right i'm between a medium and a large and you know trying to get in better shape and so even within that sort of category there different things fit me different ways and 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 i i feel guilty i i there's been a lot of times where if i want to try a new brand in particular i have to order multiple styles multiple sizes multiple products um especially since you know stores these days don't carry as much inventory and if you want to try a, a brand that you aren't familiar with uh, you may not even be able to go to the mall, nor do you have the time. So, you know, I'm caught between a rock and a hard place where I want to try new clothes, um, but I want to make sure they fit because I don't want to deal with all that like extra time and, and energy. Um, so I'm I'm excited this type of technology is out there. Yeah. Yeah. And two other things before we move on from that one, just lots of really exciting stuff. But I think it was it sort of alluded to from what we're talking about, but I don't know if we explicitly said not only does it help the manufacturers with returns, but it also helps the waste stream because um, a lot of these particular items, they get returned, but they don't necessarily get restocked in some way, you know, because it doesn't feel right to send someone else some clothes somebody else tried on. So someone who cannot end up in landfills right, right there. So there's a lot of uh, potential environmental positivity there. 
or even just people order the wrong size and they don't return it, right? <laughs> and they just get rid of it. Um, and then the other thing uh, that, that's really interesting there is that it opens this world that people could become models of all sorts of different shapes and sizes for particular clothing. And that, it, that people are encouraged to share themselves wearing these things that they like the looks of and other people say, hey, I like the way that looks on you. It's probably gonna look good on me. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, what we didn't mention is if you post something, you actually get a micropayment. You get a little bit for doing it and becoming that That's model. That's cool. So yeah. he was saying they actually have people going into dressing rooms, which I do not condone this, and yeah. trying various things on and taking pictures of it. So uh, that. That's funny, but you know, you 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 guys mentioned um, some things that sort of, uh, sort of, or some of the art of the intersection with blockchain too, which is micropayments and turning everyone into their own creator and influencer and empowering them. And it sort of makes me wonder about uh, a broader sort of theme here that we're not going to be able to fully flesh out today. I think it's in fact it's, it's probably a conversation that's going to last years from now. But we have this situation where Web3, which is a, even a more nascent space than AI, um, is coming together with AI. Both are moving super fast. Um, I'm curious, Ron, from these early episodes, uh, what are some of the ways you foresee these worlds coming together, especially given um, these are things that, you know, you've been a student of blockchain, a, a sort of leader in blockchain for a while as well. And, and now we have AI and it's smacking us in the face, but it's been around a while too. Yeah, the overlaps are unimaginable. And I mean that literally, um, you know, we've got in, in, let's move over to crypto for a moment. We've got to uh, uh, contend with, you know, what are we really going to be allowed to do? And anybody that follows the news and some of the big companies and litigation, they can see that that is being sorted out now and is not yet clear how it's going to land. So while that's playing out, the industry doesn't slow down, right? The industry keeps going. Why? It's worldwide. So what's happening in one jurisdiction, there might be another jurisdiction where it's able to grow. So that that becomes something kind of amazing. So when you get, I mean, this the uh, uh, parallel is a perfect example. You get a real utility here, right? Of, of a potential token. By the way, I don't know that they're using tokens, um, but I'm using it as an example. Micropayments enable people to do things they couldn't do before and extract value out of them. It's pretty amazing. So they cross over and I think the fact is, Josh, it's a perfect question. I don't know that I can really answer it, which I'm thrilled with that. This is a discovery. We're all going to be discovering this together. I mean, the guests that Edge of has been lining up are, I mean, look at the conversation we've had here so far. Like you can see the variety and there's just going to be more and more and more. So I think we discover it all together. And I'll say what's been said before. There's no limit and there's no industry there's no industry that won't be touched by AI. None. Definitely. Well said. And uh, yeah, I think I was said excellently. And I think that's a great way to wrap up this segment. And I think it's time for uh, our, our quick hitters. Should we go ahead and dive into that, guys? Oh, yeah, let's do it. And by the way, um, we're, we're mimicking this segment in, in Edge of AI uh, with something similar but different. It's called AI Wants to Know. And it's basically those questions that AI, even no matter how smart it's got, it just can't quite figure out about us quirky human beings. And um, and so you can look out for that on the Edge of AI podcast. But we won't get into that with you, Ron, today. Maybe another day we'll get your AI wants to know. Today, though, you're on the Edge of NFT, and it's time for Edge Quick Hitters. This is a fun and quick way to get to know you a little bit better. Ten questions, and we're looking for just a short, single, or few word response. But feel free to expand if you get the urge. Are you ready, Ron? I am, and I I should have been uh, advanced prep for this, guys. Thank you very much. So we'll just wing <laughs> it. Go for it. <laughs> you know, you've listened to the show, so hopefully we, you can always decline to answer whatever you want. <laughs> I but, reserve uh, the right. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be great. Uh, you've got such a great history. All right, number question number one. What is the first thing you remember ever purchasing in your life? Wow. Um, I can tell you what snapped into my mind. It was an album and it was an album by <laughs> a lot of this crowd won't know it, but it's Iron Butterfly. Right. Uh, it was called Ball and it had the infamous song in Agata De Vida, which I think was 18 minutes long or something like that. <laughs> nice. I always liked how Iron Butterfly and Led Zeppelin had like a similar theme to their names. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. 
Qu question number two, what is the first thing you actually remember selling in your life? Oh, that would probably be a bicycle because I used to get them, tear them apart, build new ones and sell them around. Just love to do that. Nice. So before you were building homes, you were building bicycles. Absolutely. I was, I don't know what age, very, very young. And our side yard ended up being sort of a junkyard of parts, which I was very proud of. Cool. Next question. Question number three. Josh, you want to take that one? Absolutely. So Ron, what is the most recent thing you purchased? Wow. Uh, good question. What's the most recent thing I purchased? I don't know. I, you know, um, I got Much. tickets to something and I'm trying to remember what I re I just bought tickets to, uh, to a show of some sort. I don't even recall what it was. I just bought them last week. All right. Well, um, hopefully it also, you have tickets to Oppenheimer because that was pretty awesome. I saw that this weekend. It was sold out for several several days and it was really hard to find the theater with the comfort seats at a good time but totally worth it um what is the most recent thing you sold well the first thing that comes to mind that was that was kind of easy is i was driving a 1967 gmc pickup truck as my daily driver as you can tell from my early days with bicycles i've always liked vehicles and uh it was really great but i did just sell it so uh so that one went away nice well, um, to switch things up a little bit, what is your most prized possession? That, well, I'm going with physical stuff, so I don't offend any people out there. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I have a motorcycle, I have a 1969 Harley Davidson old police bike that's beautiful and perfect condition, and it's just a work of art. Yeah, living out in LA, I'm sure you're taking on some really great rides up and down the coast, so. Yeah. Um, on the flip side, uh, if you could buy anything in the world, digital, physical, service, experience, et cetera, um, that's currently for sale, what would you purchase? You know, I don't know. It's a great question. I don't know for sure, but it would be an experience. For instance, I don't speak Spanish, and I was at least Googling around, looking at, can I, can I go to a surf camp that also teaches Spanish? And sure enough... I was finding them. So that, that's a top of my mind because I was just looking for that. Oh, yeah. Dominical. I, I put, you know, why not? Uh, Costa Rica. It's one of the best surfing areas. And, in, in, you know, you'll learn a little Spanish 100 percent. Yeah. Yeah. yeah my, first, my first surfing experience was in Lima, Peru. Um, I don't know that those guys would, would also teach you English, but uh, it was a good surfing instructor. I believe they called the guy Doc. And he was like this old old wise surfer guy you know um so you got a couple options this is great yeah um all right and affordable <laughs> i think these are affordable things all right question number seven if you could pass on one of your personality traits to the next generation what would it be um i'd say thank you dad and that is has to do with character and integrity as like he ingrained that in us above all so that would be it. Awesome. All right. Uh, question number eight. If you could eliminate one of your personality traits from the next generation, what would it be? Well, that would be mom. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> good, good point. Uh, if I could eliminate one. You know, I don't know because I think I have had traits that I didn't like, and I, I do self-assess, and then I work on changing them. So I'm not saying I don't have any negatives. Let's not get a bunch of emails saying how I'm uh, <laughs> being self-absorbed here, because I'm not. But right now, I don't, um, I can't, nothing comes to the surface right now. No doubt there's a next one there, but I just don't know where it is. Yeah, taking a hiatus. That's, that's, that's well-deserved. <laughs> All right, next question, Josh. What did you do just before joining us on the podcast? Oh, that's interesting. I had to run out and do something. Um, drove down my street, which is right by Pacific Coast Highway here in Malibu. And there was two dogs running free on Pacific Coast Highway. So what did I do? I parked where I shouldn't park. I did illegal U-turns. I chased the dogs. And uh, we ended up getting them back in their backyards. That was literally 15 minutes before this podcast. Well, thank, thanks, God. thank God for the... Uh 
uh, makeup artist that, that applied some powder to your forehead uh, <laughs> that we we sent over to your house for the show. So that worked out. Um, so you were the one that called her. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what are you going to do after the podcast? I'm going to go do what I was going to do before the dogs. <laughs> um, you know, I work in large part from my computer doing Zooms all day and and working virtual. And my personality is such that I need interaction. So I actually have valuable things I have to go do during the day. But every day I make sure I'm out of here 30 to 60 minutes for sure, mixing it up with some real live people. And I can consider it critical. So I'll be going up into Palisades Village and uh, doing some probably not so important things, but uh, getting my sunshine that way. Nice. Awesome. Well, all great questions and great responses, but we always like to finish with a nice bonus question. So today's bonus is, what is the most random class seminar or workshop you've ever taken that ended up being impactful in your life? Oh my gosh. Um, two things come to mind. They're very different than one another. The, the first one was many years ago. I went, to, uh, I went to a seminar that was actually in Mexico and I met a gentleman there and he's and the, the seminar had to do with uh, international funds. And I'll never forget, the guy looked at me and he said, making money, never a problem. Keeping it, it's a problem. Be very careful. So that was impactful from that moment, learning that. Um, but then the other one was, you know, PPCH again and driving by a, a sign that said volleyball lessons here. I had never played in my life. And um, I called up and I said, I'm sure it's for kids. Do you take adults? Not realizing how many adults played. And the next thing you know, I was being taught by uh, the best volleyball players in the world. And it sparked 10 years of being on the beach. Fantastic. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm, I'm envious of you. I'm, I'm, I'm playing in a beach volleyball league right now and um, begin some extra practice on the side because I've never played before. So I'm, I'm well, sure I don't know if you, you know are... the two names, Randy Stoklos and Sinjin Smith, but they were the winningest uh, men's team in history at the time. And uh, those, those are the guys. I think they might still be teaching. I'll let you know, Richard. Awesome. Very cool. Well, um, typically we might head on over to hot topics. We're going to skip it for today, but um, there might be some kind of hot news about what, where Edge of Company is headed in the coming weeks and months here. Josh, do you got an update for us? Yeah, yeah. Um, passports are up to date and travel is booked. Uh, some of the crew is going to be heading on over to Seoul, Korea for Korea Blockchain Week. We're really excited about that. Um, which I, I believe the, the core dates are, are the 4th through the 6th, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so we'll be a media partner for that event. And then NFT now has their gateway event in Korea that we'll be checking out. So really excited about that. And then um, we'll be heading on over to uh, Singapore. There's a, a really cool event that we're going to be a media partner for again this year called All That Matters. Um, that really is a really, it's interesting intersection cultural affair around sort of the intersection of, of music and, and film and, and TV um, culture, as well as sort of Web3, uh, the Web3 portions um, in partnership with Engine Starter, one of our friends. So looking forward to that event. And then, of course, Token 2049 is just after that, um, right before the Formula One race in Singapore. And, and a lot of the who's who in the industry will be there. And we got some more interviews cooking. So if you're going to be around uh, any of these events, drop us a note. Uh, let us know. DM us on Twitter or drop us a line. Uh, if you want to do some kind of collaboration or whatnot, you know, we're not hard to find. And uh, otherwise, we'll see you on the flip side in Asia. And then we'll be back in L.A. for some more fun stuff after that. Great stuff. So look out on the socials and the newsletter for updates from, from all those world travels. Very exciting stuff. Um, and we continue to sort of build those partnerships all over the world. Um, and does well for everything we're doing here from NFTs to Web3 to AI. All right. So here's where we would typically close out um, and ask our guests to share uh, their, their sort of social media links and handles and stuff. I, I'd love, Ron, for you to share a few things just about uh, what you're up to maybe independently. And, and I can go forward after that and share about the Edge of AI podcast. Anything you want to share in terms of how people can find out more about you and what you're up to independently of the Edge of AI? 
Uh, well, our subsidiary blockchain training alliance is doing some really cool things. We just signed a contract with uh, Hedera Hashgraph, and uh, we're doing some courses for them um, that are pretty exciting. We're in the process of developing them right now. I think that's amazing. Uh, and it's, it's on the heels of some other blockchains we've been working for, from Zcash to Polkadot and some others. Uh, so we're still knee deep in that. And we're, it's a couple of things I can't mention there, but they're uh, in addition to that with another major university. A lot of you may know that, you know, we have an association with Pepperdine University, but there's another major university um, we're speaking with and some other things. So that's been really, really exciting. And within the parent company, uh, we're working on various things that that I think encapsulate the right now in what's going on in the blockchain world uh, and the crypto world to some degree. So I think that's pretty amazing. As far as where to find find us, the crypto company, look at the, the handles on uh, YouTube is where we are a lot. But of course, um, you know, Twitter and uh, Blockchain Training Alliance is is on everything from Instagram to Twitter, et cetera. Awesome. All right, folks. Well, make sure you head on over to subscribe to the Edge of AI podcast. If you want to hear a bit more from Ron and his uh, super califragilistic uh, hosting uh, possibilities. Um, he's a really great host, as we mentioned. Um, you can go to edgeofai.xyz forward slash subscribe or just edgeofai.xyz to get all that info. Um, by the way, we've seen we've got People pre-subscribe to the podcast so far, um, and it's really exciting to, to see the activity even before we've officially launched. Um, you can also follow us on Twitter, edge of underscore AI. Check us out on LinkedIn. Uh, the company is just uh, edge of AI, no spaces on that LinkedIn uh, link, linkedin.com forward slash company forward slash edge of AI, no spaces, and, uh, and keep up with what we're doing. So uh, I will say after that, we have reached the outer limit at the Edge of NFTs for today. Thanks for exploring with us. We've got space for more adventures on the Starship. So invite your friends and recruit some cool strangers that will make this journey all so much better. How? Go to Spotify or iTunes right now. Rate us and say something awesome. Then go to edgeofnft.com to dive further down the rabbit hole. Look us up on all major social platforms by typing Edge of NFT with no spaces and start a fun conversation with us online. Lastly, be sure to tune in next time for more great Web3 content. And thank you for sharing this time with us today. The views and opinions expressed on Edge of NFT reflect solely those views and opinions of the show hosts and its guests. Please make sure to do your own research. Our show is not financial advice. You understand that you are using any and all information available on or through this podcast at your own risk. Whenever making financial decisions, we recommend doing your own research and talking to your accountant for financial advice. From time to time, we may feature sponsored content on the show for which we receive value, and we may share links for which we receive a commission if you make a purchase through one of those links. Refer to our website, www.edgeofnft.com, for our full disclaimer, terms and conditions, and privacy policy.